Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this tutorial, I just want to share a couple of audio tips. One of which is how we reattach audio to our clip when we've detached it. Uh, so sometimes you might want to either mute your audio or remove the audio completely uh, from your tracks, but then at some point in time, you may need to reattach that. We're also going to have a look at how you dip your audio when you have, for instance, music playing below a voice track. Um, so we're going to have a quick look at that. And then we're going to have a look at a way in which we can improve our audio when we actually have music playing behind our voice. So a couple of different things alongside the dipping that you'll be able to do to kind of improve that. So the first thing is, is that when we have a, a voice track here, essentially sometimes for whatever reason, when you're editing, you may want to remove that or detach that audio. So if we right click here, you can see we have this option to detach the audio. And sometimes people will do it if they want to move things back into sync, perhaps your audio is running out of sync, um, or if you want to remove the audio completely. So if we delete that track now, the problem is, is that once we've actually removed that track, it doesn't exist in our clip now on the timeline. So if we want to get that audio back, then we have to go through this kind of method to do it. So with our clip selected in the timeline, we're going to do Shift and F, and that is going to highlight the range selected in that particular clip on the timeline. So you can see up here in this post project intro, basically that little yellow box is the box around the same selection that I've got on the timeline. Now, if I hover over this clip, so this is highlighted yellow, move my playhead back to the beginning of that clip and then press D, it's gonna overwrite that now because it's exactly the same length, then basically it's gonna overwrite that audio. Now, if you have a track where, for instance, perhaps we have our audio on a separate layer, so we'll just pop it over here and shorten it a little bit. Then if we do Shift and F, and then with this highlighted, we do D, it's not gonna do exactly what we wanted. It's actually gonna drop that original selected track wherever the playhead is located. So what we need to do then with that clip on a layer is we'll come up to here and grab this clip. And we wanna look for that hand symbol when we're dragging it down. Now, if you can't quite grab the clip with the hand, then just come up to the little speech bubble film strip up here and we will zoom in on the time of our clip and you'll see that selection just grows a bit bigger and it gets a bit easier to grab that clip. Now if we drag this down to the timeline and hover over our original clip and let go, then you can see we've basically got the option to replace it, replace it from the start, from the end, etc. And we can do that on the main storyline as well. So if we select our clip here, do Shift and F, and then drag this down, hover over here and replace. Then it will do the same as using the shortcut D with our playhead placed at the beginning of our clip here. So we've got a voice track here. We want to drop the audio down here um, below our voice track. So if we play this through right now. You can see the audio is really going to fight with that audio in the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the option key, click once here, once again here, and two times at the end of my clip. I'm holding down the option key on this line in the middle of my audio will basically allow me to drop down those audio levels. Now, if your audio levels are a little harder to see or your height here is a little bit shorter, then you can come to the little speech bubble across here and we can increase the height of our clips. Okay, so now you can see with that selected, it's a little bit easier to grab that part of the clip, the line there. And normally I will drop my audio down somewhere between minus 20, minus 30 decibels, depending on the track, and then just play it back and see how that works out. Hey, it's Ben here. And in this, and we might want to smooth out this drop a little bit more so that we don't have an abrupt kind of stop of the audio. Hey, it's Ben here. And in this, this now, sometimes you'll find um, that the audio is a bit too quiet when you drop it down to minus 20, minus 30. So that's where this plugin comes in from FX Factory. So if we come to our effects across on the right, we're going to come down to the Crumple Pop plugins here, and we're going to use the Crumple Pop Clear VoiceOver option here. So we'll drag this down, and you'll see the audio waveform will change a little bit. And basically now up in our inspector, if we come and scroll down here, you can see we've got the Crumple Pop voiceover applied, and we just need to click on this little tool, and it will allow us to then clear the voiceover. I haven't played around too much with the strength and mud removal and all that kind of stuff here, but it seems to do a pretty good job of just removing 
those sounds that are interfering with your voice. So we'll play this back once again, creating a poster using the software Inkscape. Now this directly draws from the, the and pause this. And you can see if I lift this up, we'll go to say minus 15. Hey, it's Ben here. And in this project, you're gonna be creating a poster using the software Inkscape. Now this directly. So that's with the crumple pop turned on. If I come up here and uncheck this, we'll just play through that same section. In this project, you're gonna be creating a poster using the software Inkscape. Now this directly draw. And so you can hear the difference between having crumple pop turned on and turned off. So there's a few different tips and tricks for working with your audio. One other thing I would definitely do with a voice track like this is just pull in and have a little fade at the beginning and end so we don't get any snaps and pops, which often the audio track in the background, the music track in the background will hide any of those, but it's still a good idea to get into the habit of just fading your audio in a little bit at the beginning and end, just a little bit to stop any clicks or pops that might pop up, especially if you're cutting between the same track on the same timeline. So there's one more way of dipping this down and that is using the range selection tool. So I'm just gonna reset the volume here up in my inspector. And then we're gonna to come to another tool here the range selection tool. And if we, with the range selection tool, just pull across our audio track here, we can dip down using that. So we don't have to add all those keyframes in there. Although being able to add the keyframes is useful sometimes. Another thing might pop up here. So as you're editing, we'll just jump back to the selection tool. I'm gonna trim down my track, change the duration of a couple of things, and we'll basically have moved this dipped audio away from where my voice is. So if I click on my first keyframe here, hold down shift, and then click on my last keyframe, it will select all those keyframes in between, which is really nice. So I don't have to click on all those little keyframes in that space. So that's really nice because it means that if we have, for instance, let's just stretch this out, multiple audio tracks, Just adding quickly a bit of complexity to my edit here. So I've got all these sections drop down and then we get a request to delete this clip at the beginning. So we delete our clip at the beginning and that bumps all of these out of position. So rather than having to move all these keyframes, I can just click on the first one, hold down shift, click on the last one and then drag this back and it would move all those dipped audio areas back into position. And obviously I can do that differently for each of these, depending on where the gap is. So we can hold down shift and I'm just clicking in the dark gray area to remove the selection where I need to. And then gradually we can rebuild our edit. And I'm just using option to duplicate those clips quickly. So you can see now we have our audio dip down and using a mixture of shift and clicking on the keyframes, we can move those keyframes quickly back into position rather than having to remake them all. So there's a few quick audio tips. If you have any questions about working with audio in Final Cut Pro 10, then please do drop me a message below. Hopefully the tip about reconnecting your audio to the clip is useful and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.